Answer theory, this is probably the dominant approach that people think about. They think about this sort of two-stage or conditional factor demand approach, even if ultimately we're interested in the unconditional factor demands. And I think I asked you last time, how would you go from these conditional factor demands to unconditional factor demands, which is the analog from the consumer problem of going from Hicksian demand to Marshallian demand, which of course involved the Slutsky equation. This will not be the same as the Slutsky equation, because remember the Slutsky equation is based on the concept of holding in nominal income constant, which isn't present in this problem. But nonetheless, we can combine these equations to say, well, how will things vary if we allow y to vary endogenously? So then the way we want to think about it is we want to know was, what is partial xi, partial wj, for the unconditional factor demand, which would be a function of w1 of the wn and p, right? That is, the unconditional factor demand would say, I'm not holding output constant. I'm going to hold the output price constant. And I'm going to say, now you're optimizing over y, right? So this is y optimized out. That is, now I'm saying, how would the demand for factor i vary with the price of factor j if I let the firm ch change its output? Okay. People get the exercise. And if I want to endogenize output, it's pretty straightforward how to do that. I simply take this equation and I say, well, let's let the firm vary the level of y so as to keep this equality between price and marginal cost as I change the price of factor j. Everybody understand how that works? OK. So what would I get? I would get, well, p is not changing, so I would get 0 equals, and I'm just going to, instead of writing all these partials out, I'm just going to write it as Cyj, right? So that's the derivative of this with respect to the price of factor j. So when I write Cyj, that's the second derivative of the cost function, once with respect to y, once with respect to the price of factor j, OK, plus Cyy dy dwj. So that's telling me, how does y respond to the change in the price of factor j? Well, y has to respond in such a way that it continues to hold price equals marginal cost. This implies dy dwj is equal to minus cyj over cyy. Okay. So it says the output that we see the firm choosing as we change the price of factor j is going to depend on whether increases in the price of factor j raise or lower marginal cost, right? Because this is the derivative of marginal cost with respect to the price of factor j, right? So Cyj equals partial marginal cost, partial wj. But it's also equal to partial xj, partial y, right? Because those are just the two ways of looking at the, at, at, the, at the second derivative of the cost function, right? Take the derivative in the sort of y first and then wj. Then you're thinking about it as the derivative of marginal cost with respect to the price of j. And otherwise, you're looking at it as the derivative of xj with respect to y. Now, the derivative of xj with respect to y has to do with this, whether this factor is normal or inferior, right? A normal factor of production would be a factor that rises with the level of output. If it's an inferior factor, which they exist, just like inferior goods exist in consumer theory, inferior factors exist in production theory. They're not as common, I would think. But you know, I can come up with some examples for you. But this is, the, this is telling me whether it's normal or inferior. But what's important to realize is that if factor j is inferior, okay, that is, it goes down as output goes up, then what must be true? As its price rises, marginal cost falls. That's a kind of counterintuitive result, right? Higher price for a factor 
reduces marginal cost. Anybody understand why that happens in that case? Yeah. Yeah, the way to think about it, I think the way, to, more, kind of a more general way even to think about it, is marginal cost, right? The cost, think about it, what's the cost of W1 up to WNY plus 1 minus the cost of W1 up to WNY, right? That is, what's the cost of producing one more unit of output minus the cost? Well, this is the sum of xi of y plus 1, right? That is, i equals 1 to n, wi, minus the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi of y, right, times d wi, which is the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi y plus 1 minus xi of y times wi. And this is what you're saying. If I use less of this factor as output goes up, then this term is negative. That is, it's actually a lowers, it lowers my marginal cost. Because by producing more output, I use less of this factor. I switch away from this factor as I, as I increase my output. So that actually means, while well, my total cost has to rise, right? There's no way total cost goes down as the price of an input goes up. Marginal cost can very well fall. Way to think about it is, like you said, some low levels of output, I use shovels. At a high level of output, I use an automated machine. As shovels become more expensive, I have an incentive to shift to the high levels of output to get away from those more expensive shovels. Everybody understand that? It's just it's very standard economics. It's just I have an incentive to always move away from the factor that's gotten more expensive. All right? So anyway, so this basically says if it's a normal factor, this will be positive. This, of course, will be negative, right? Because you have rising marginal cost for profit maximization. So this, I'm sorry, this will be positive. Rising marginal cost, this will be positive. So I have a minus sign. So what will happen is output will fall. So if I have a normal factor of production, it gets more expensive. The firm will produce less. If I have an inferior factor, actually output will rise. 